Hi everyone, my name is Kayla Black. I'm going to be the director of the summer course program that IYNA is hosting in 2023. Um, we are holding this program for the third time. We had it in the summer of 2022 and 2020. So as for the past two times, the program gets different and different each year just because we're learning what does and doesn't work and trying to grow. So I'm making this video to tell everyone what they can expect, some logistics about the program. You should watch this thoroughly and note down all the logistics. Um, and there's a part in the application where you will be asked to write a response about the program, about why you want to do this program. And it's expected that you'll have watched this video and you'll reflect your understanding of the things I say in this written response. So I'm just going to be looking at some stuff on my computer while I talk. So yeah, first I'm going to go through the mission of the program, the structure of the program, what you can expect, those types of logistics. Then I'm going to talk about how you actually apply, how you know if it's a good idea for you to apply, um, and anything involving the application. Then I'm going to read through the frequently asked questions page that we have. Um, this frequently asked questions page is going to be posted in a PDF form in our application PDF on our website. So after November 1st, that'll be posted there and you'll be able to find it. It's also gonna be linked in the description in our Instagram. So yeah, you can find that um, there and you can kind of reference the things I say also in that document. Okay, so first of all, we've officially decided on a name for our program. It's gonna be called Youth Neuroscience and our program has two courses that we offer each summer now. It's going to be Youth Neuroscience 1 and Youth and Neuroscience 2. And I'll talk about the difference between these two and how you know which one to apply to later on. So, okay, the goal of the program is to give interested and motivated students opportunities to pursue and explore neuroscience um, in a very like rigorous and high quality way. Now, I don't mean rigorous as in you need to be a genius to do this. The point is we want students who actually want to learn and will take advantage of what we have to offer. Um, you don't have to have a tremendous amount of background knowledge to complete any of our programs. So if you're interested in neuroscience, uh, if you want to learn more, if you want to really make use of some really awesome TAs, some lectures, things like this, then this program might be for you. Um, so that's the mission. The structure of our program is, if you took it last year, it's going to be similar, but it's going to have some more components. If you didn't, that's okay. I'll explain it. So we have TAs that we have volunteer for us and every student gets assigned a TA. So the TAs lead these things called recitations. Um, if you're a university student, this is kind of similar to how um, universities work in the US. So you have your normal lecture component of the class, you have your recitation component, and then you have any supplementary stuff. So we have either graduate students, postdocs, or professors volunteer to give lectures in a variety of topics. I'll go through the exact topics you can expect in Neuroscience 1 and 2 later, but we have lecturers give these topics. There's um, a one and a half to two hour lecture usually, and then we host these lectures three times a week. So whether you're doing Neuroscience 1 or Neuroscience 2, you can expect to have um, a lecture three times a week and we're offering both our programs in two different time zones. So we're going to have them at 8 a.m. GMT and 8 p.m. GMT. If you take the 8 a.m. GMT, you can expect Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you'll have a lecture at 8 a.m. GMT to 10 a.m. GMT. And then in addition to this, you have two recitations per week. The difference between recitations and lectures in our program is that lecturers teach you all of the basic content. You'll go, you'll listen, there will be slides where you'll learn things similar to what you would read from a textbook or read in literature, things like this. Then at the recitations, this is a chance for you to work through the material with your TA. So we generally keep a student TA ratio of about uh, 1 to 5 to 1 to 10. So at any given time, there's never going to be more than 10 students in your recitation section. Um, the purpose of this is so that you can really have that one-on-one -on -one time and connection with your TA. And your TA is going to be someone that we vetted, they're going to be someone who has completed at least basic university level neuroscience curriculum. And so what you'll do in the recitations is you'll go through these pre-made slides and you're going to work through data analysis questions from literature figures, short answer questions, um, all these things kind of helping you really see how well you understand the knowledge from the lecture and helping you apply. There's no grades or anything like that. It's just to really help you like work with the material farther. These recitations are for 
about two hours and we have them twice a week. Now the lecture times are set. The recitation times are also set but there's a lot more options. This past um, summer we held about 20 recitations and we hold them like all over different time zones. So what you'll do is you'll select whether you want to do the 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. GMT lecture and then you'll also select which of the 20 plus recitation times work best for you. Um, everyone is expected to stick through to that recitation time throughout the entirety of the program, which is one month. However, um, yeah, you get to choose which recitation you want from the get-go, so it, there's a lot of flexibility there. So we have these two main components. We also have supplementary components to the material. So we have homework, set, um, homework um, work problem sets. And so every student is also expected to complete 70% of the assigned problem sets, um, at least 70%. So if it's not a fraction that goes well into 70%, you know, you have to hit the, you have to hit above 70%. Um, yeah, so we give these problem sets and usually there's one problem set corresponding to two lectures half the time and one problem set corresponding to another um, lecture the other half the time, just to kind of not have a homework due every day. And so then, yeah, um, what you do is you complete this, you can use your TA for help, you can use the office hours for help, you submit it. So this is a required part of the program. And our homework is a little bit untraditional in that we don't expect students to get the right answer. That is not the focus. I mean, if you can do that, that's awesome. But we really encourage students to engage with the material. So if you're asked a question on the homework and you don't know it, it's completely satisfactory to say, I don't know this, this is exactly why I don't know this, and you know, I I have this idea from the lecture, this idea from the recitation, they're incompatible, I'm confused about this. That's an acceptable answer. We just expect students to engage with the material in some way. Um, and we also have a, a no tolerance for plagiarism. So um, yeah, if you're confused about what plagiarism is, you can read the policy on our website under the summer course section. Um, we will remove students immediately for plagiarism. We removed about six students last summer and we'll do the same thing this time. So we're not tolerating any plagiarism. But this is all the logistics about the homework. Uh, you can see that like the point is really not for you to come in and be a genius in this course. You don't get grades. There's no benefit to copying. There's no benefit to um, not engaging with the material. You know, you, you learn whatever you want to from this course. You can gain as much as you're willing to put in. So that's kind of our philosophy. We don't do grades because we want people to focus on learning. We want people to learn, you know, what you don't know, how you go about finding information. Um, and then we have, we're going to make mandatory work sessions for the problem sets. This is different from last year if you participated. So we really want to emphasize collaboration in the coming years. So it's going to be mandatory that everyone attends and participates in homework sessions. There will be a TA present moderating the session, and this is your chance to kind of work with your fellow classmates on the problems. The reason this is a good idea is because a lot of our homework is challenging. It's based on interpretation, reading figures from literature, researching things. Um, these types of things you really benefit a lot from working with other people to see what their ideas are, how you all are interpreting different things, and to have someone to bounce ideas off of. So this participation is going to be mandatory. Um, our homeworks tend to be very challenging, so it you should gain a lot from working with other people. It's not like, you know, in a normal high school classroom setting, you might just know all the answers for sure, right? So it's a waste to work with people. Um, our homework is not like that, so it should be a good experience. And yeah, um, we're going to have those and we're also going to have projects. So if you did the pro or if you did the program last year, you will have done, if you completed the program, you will have done our poster symposium at the end. What we had students do is they worked with their TA to choose a scientific paper and they had to read through it, analyze the figures themselves, and they had to create an academic poster. Um, kind of like presenting the results of this paper and giving like proper recognition to the people who actually did the research. Then they presented this work, um, the poster they made at a symposium. So this project was really helpful for a lot of students. It's a really valuable experience. You learn to make an academic poster, you learn to read figures, um, you learn how a paper is structured, and you learn how to apply some neuroscience knowledge that you learned. So we will be doing that again and we'll be implementing one to two other projects. 
So at any given point in the program, you're going to be working on the lectures, the homeworks, the recitations, and a current project. So the program is a bit more intensive than in the past, but we're hoping that students really get a chance to explore their interests and gain as much as they can out of the program. Um, so that's what the components are. The philosophy of this program is we don't want students just to memorize. Science is a very explorative subject. It's very inquisitive. You can really have a good time with it. We want students to learn how to do this, how to find knowledge, how to explore things, and how to know what you don't know. So really we're trying to help students move towards a more mature mindset and more scientific mindset. So that's the goal in this. It's not just to learn textbook neuroscience content. It's really to prepare you to kind of start exploring neuroscience at a more mature and academic level. So that's what you can gain out of doing this. Um, yeah, you can expect if you do either neuroscience one or two, you will at least have a, some level of familiarity with literature afterwards. You'll know the basics of grant proposals because that's going to be one of our projects. You'll know how to make an academic poster um, and you'll learn a lot of neuroscience content. And there is going to be so much help along the way. We're having these homework help sessions. We're having TAs, office hours. So it's really like an unparalleled opportunity to, to work with really talented people one-on-one -on -one to push the bounds of what you know in the field of neuroscience. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the logistics and structure of the program. So I mentioned that we're going to have two different types of programs, Neuroscience 1 and Neuroscience 2. So what we've done is we've developed this curriculum and last year we only launched half of it. This year we're finally launching the full thing. So Neuroscience 1 is going to be an introductory to neuroscience. It's going to have an introductory to neuroscience component, which is like an intro to neuroscience lecture cellular molecular neuroscience, history to neuroscience, synaptic transmission, action potential, things like this. It's also going to have um, a unit where you really learn about research. So you learn about model organisms, you learn about experimental neuroscience, you learn about pharmacology. Then we're also going to have um, some kind of sensation and movement module. So you'll learn about um, neuroanatomy, vision, audition, somatosensation, um, chemo sensation and movement. So that's the first component and um, yeah, overall what you learn is, is intro to neuro, how experimental neuroscience works, and kind of the basics of sensation and motion. If you took the program last year, you will have covered the introduction to neuroscience component of that, but you will not have covered the experimental neuroscience component or the sensation and motion components. So you will have covered about one third of the program. Um, and then Neuroscience 2 is going to be cognitive functions. Um, it's going to cover developmental neuroscience a bit, and it's going to cover um, disorder neuroscience a bit. So we're going to learn like cognitive neuroscience, neuroimaging, sleep, learning and memory, language, um, central nervous system patterning and development, synapse formation and elimination, uh, plasticity, neurodevelopment, psychiatric disorders, neurodegenerative disorders, multi-system disorders, and neuroethics. So if you took the program last year, you'll have taken the learning and memory lecture and the frontiers in neuroscience lecture, but you won't really have taken anything else. So this is the breakdown between these two curriculum wise. The structure of the program is exactly the same. Everyone will have recitations, everyone will have lectures, everyone will have mandatory homework help sessions. Um, all of those things will be the same. You will just go to the one corresponding to the neuroscience one or two, depending on which one you choose. Um, so we recommend even if you did the program in 2020 or 2022, that you still start with neuroscience one. The reason being we have this research unit of neuroscience one, and it's going to be expected that you're familiar with that if you do neuroscience two. Neuroscience two is much more heavily focused on literature, figures, data analysis, things like this. Um, so if you're still new to the field of neuroscience and you still don't really have a good foundation of the basics, this is going to be a bit more difficult. Um, however, it is up to you which one you want to choose. Our recommendation is that students who have a basic background in high school biology can take neuroscience one and also a very minimal working level of mathematics. You should, you should know what functions are, you should know like how to use numbers, you should know 
um, simple things that you would learn in like an algebra, maybe in an algebra one and algebra two course in high school. Um, if you have those and a very minimal knowledge of chemistry as well, you know what ions are, you know um, the periodic table, things like this, you should be good to go. Anyone who knows that can enroll in neuroscience one. Neuroscience two is intended for people who have a more solid foundation, not only in neuroscience content, but in exploring neuroscience research. Not necessarily that you've done research yourself, but that you can read the work that other people are doing. Because a lot of these things like cognitive neuroscience, learning and memory, language, a lot of these things are really on the frontier of neuroscience, we'll be diving a lot more into research and literature. So um, this is kind of more recommended for advanced high school students or people who have one or two years of undergraduate under their belt. Um, yeah, so that's our recommendation. However, we leave um, up to you which one you feel like you want to take. We do want to emphasize that it doesn't benefit you at all if you place yourself into a course that is really above your level. Um, the courses are already challenging as it is for anyone who is at that level. So if you enroll in Neuroscience 2 just because you think it's cool and you haven't done any of the materials in Neuroscience 1, you will likely not be able to do any of the homeworks, any of the projects, um, and you will likely not complete the course. This isn't meant to scare people, it's just meant to say, you know, you really you should think about and internalize what's best for you and move forward based on that. Um, we'll be hosting this program annually, so if you want to take both, then you can just take Neuroscience 1 this summer and Neuroscience 2 next summer. That's a possibility as well. Um, anyone can take the courses, however, we do want you to kind of keep in mind that um, these are going to be catered towards high school and undergraduate students. So if you're a master's student, a PhD student, um, or if you fall into some other category, you know, you're not a student at all, um, you should keep in mind that we are going to cater the course towards this specific educational range. So you should just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so this is kind of about the difference between neuroscience one and two and what you can expect out, out of those respective programs. Okay, so that was also who should apply in terms of like what actual qualifications you need to apply. But we also want to kind of emphasize um, you need to have time for this program. So I know that you know you might be used to like seeing Coursera courses, seeing online courses, and these take a few hours a week. This program is not like that. You should internalize this very much. Um, if you are going to do this program, you are going to spend 15 to 20 hours a week on this program. Like that is the bare minimum is 15 hours. You will not spend less than that on this program. So um, if you have a full-time job, a full-time internship, it is for sure doable to do this program. You can schedule the recitations in the evenings, you can take the evening lecture, you can do all your homework on the weekends, whatever you want, because we'll post the homeworks in advance. However, um, you will need to commit to 15 to 20 hours. We will not relax any requirements. Um, if you have an exam for school, if you need to go to work, something like this, our deadlines will not change. We will not make exceptions for anyone so you need to just keep that in mind and think, you know, can I actually do this program? Can I commit the time to that? Of course, if you want to spend time above and beyond, you know, really making use of your TAs, the office hours, your peers in the course, um, you can spend much more time as well if you want. But yes, this is the most important thing in this video. You will spend probably 20 hours a week on this program if you do it. That's because it is a program, it's not just a course, you know. So yes, you should internalize that. Um, okay, and then you should have some level of competency to do things to enroll in this course. We have people, our volunteers are undergrad students, graduate students, professional academics. These people are all very talented. They're dedicating their time to help you. This needs to be respected. We are not going to spend hours helping you figure out how you can submit a payment in PayPal, how you can turn on Discord notifications, how you can submit your homework. These things are all expected of you. You need to be independent, you need to figure out how to do this stuff, um, and you're expected to meet these requirements that we set out for you. You're also expected to 
be respectful to the TAs, the course administrators, and any lecturers you have. These people are volunteering their time to teach you for free, and you need to really internalize that. Um, we will not be tolerating any level of disrespect, any breach of our code of conduct, so anyone who behaves inappropriately will be immediately removed and blacklisted from future IYNA programs. So, to summarize, who should apply? If you are confident that you have this competency to do tasks, or at least that you know you can troubleshoot to figure things out, if you're passionate about learning more neuroscience, and if you have 15 to 20 hours a week, then you should consider applying to the program. Um, okay, so now that we kind of went over all of that structure, um, we really want to emphasize before we get into the logistics of how to apply, like why you should do this program. Because I think, you know, you're getting access to a TA that will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. You can email and talk with the lecturers. We have lecturers from like really awesome universities. Um, and they're willing to kind of share their work with you, um, yeah, and talk to you more about the content. And you're getting access to a group of peers who are presumably going to be like the cohort of future neuroscientists. Um, we have people coming usually from around 40 countries, so you're really getting this like global network of peers that you cannot find anywhere else. So it's a really awesome opportunity um, to learn neuroscience at like in a way that's not done elsewhere, this scientific inquiry based approach um, with this one on one tutoring. That's really awesome. So, yeah, you should um, totally consider applying and like be excited about it, even though this is kind of getting bogged down with logistics. The program is genuinely really, really awesome. So, you'll gain a lot from it. Um, okay, so then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can apply. So in, if you've applied to our two previous programs, um, you probably just like filled out a Google form with like your name, your some demographics and things like that. Um, this time it's not going to be like that. We're having two stages for our application. Um, the first is a written application. The second is an interview. And then there's a third semi stage. If you're approved to be enrolled, you have to complete the enrollment steps also. Um, so there is a required application fee of two US dollars, two US dollars. And this is unwaivable, meaning there will be no fee waivers. Anyone who applies must submit the two dollars. It is non-refundable. If you do not get accepted into the program, you will not get your two dollars back. This two dollars must be paid to us via our PayPal, which is linked on the website, or our GoFundMe, which will be linked in the application document. You must submit proof of your payment to um, these two, or proof of payment through one of these two platforms in the application. Um, yeah, okay, so that's the required fee, and this is the amount of money that we need to fund our program. Um, yes, so there's that. And yeah, so the application is going to be again linked in the um, bio of our Instagram and also on our website. You'll go through it and it'll ask you a few simple things like your name, your email, um, if, you're, if you're under 18 you have to put your parent email, nationality, things like this, just so we can get some demographics. Um, you should make sure that your email works. Last year, out of the few hundred people that applied, we had around 10 or 20 emails that bounced, and so we were never able to get those people their acceptances. So please make sure you type in your email correctly. When there's the second question asking, confirm your email, do not copy and paste, retype your email. Um, then we can try both of them if, if there's a discrepancy. Okay. So there's going to be the demographics portion of the written application. Then there's going to be short answers. So this is all written on the application. If you want to stop watching and reference that, it's fine. But I'm going to also explain it in this video for anyone who's kind of wondering. So the question reads, everybody interested in neuroscience has a particular fascination with the brain. Tell us about a question in neuroscience that you perceive to be fascinating in no more than 250 words. This question is just saying, okay, you're doing this program because you like neuroscience, what aspect of neuroscience interests you? Tell us a bit about, you know, are you interested in the question, how, how are memories stored? Are you interested in the question, 
how do we have a sense of self-awareness? Just tell us a bit about that. Um, the second one, uh, it's imperative that all applicants fully understand what they're getting into and the level of commitment of our program. Please watch this video and tell us in no more than 250 words why you want to participate in the program. You must include specific details in your response that reflect your complete understanding of the mission and structure of our program. This is because we have had a lot of issues in the past with people coming in with their own expectations of what this program is going to be and trying to impose that on us. Um, while those may be you know, reasonable goals and desires, our program is about what our program is about. So you need to really reflect that you understand what we're trying to do here and that you want to be a part of it. And yeah, you need to show us that like, okay, I know exactly what this program is and I'm here for it. So just convince us of that in those 250 words. Okay, so then um, there's going to be a supplementary materials section. What you need to include is one letter of recommendation from an educator. So this can be someone who's taught you in an extracurricular setting, like they can be the sponsor for your club, they can be um, a person who is your research advisor if you do research, and they can also be one of your professors or teachers if you're in high school versus undergrad. So yeah, and then this recommendation letter should be um, no more than one page single spaced, and it just gives them an opportunity to tell us like why they think you're a good candidate for this program, um, how they know you, what they think about you, what your potential is, and things like that. Um, there will be more details provided to them upon you providing their email in the application. So how that part's going to work is you will submit um, their email in the application. They will get an email that gives them the details for like submission for what the letter expects. You're not supposed to collaborate with them at all. So you writing the recommendation letter for them is strictly prohibited. They need to write it fully on their own based on the requirements that we send them. Okay, so that's the supplementary material. So what's gonna happen is the application's gonna launch on November 1st, then you're expected to submit this by January 1st. Once you've submitted that, you should hear back from us regarding the second phase of the application. You should hear back by February 1st. The second phase of the application is you will do a group interview. This means if we think that you're a good fit based on reading your written application, that you will be invited for an interview with anywhere between three and 10 other students. Um, what you'll be asked to do in that interview will be reserved for later on. But if you are invited to the interview, you will be sent an email with more or less explicit instructions on any preparation that you need to do for the interview. It's not going to be a neuroscience test interview, so you don't need to study or learn additional materials. You just might need to, you know, come prepared to work in a group, to access Google documents, things like this. Um, and you'll be made aware of that well in advance of the interview. The interviews will take place all the way through February, and students will be notified whether they've been accepted or rejected by uh, March 17th. If you did not get invited to an interview, you will be notified of your rejection in uh, by February 1st. So if you don't progress to the interview stage, you are, have been rejected from the program. Then everyone who has been accepted or rejected after that point based on the interviews will be notified by March 17th. Then you'll get additional instructions following that regarding like what you need to do to officially enroll in the course. Anyone who is accepted on March 17th will be able to enroll. The enrollment portion is not another test, it's just you need to complete mandatory things such as choosing your recitation, choosing your lecture time, um, getting added to the proper Discord group, stuff like that. Yes, so there is that. And the program is going to range from July 3rd to August 4th. So during this whole time, you should be willing and able to commit to this. Okay, so that's um, about how you apply for our program. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you about the webinar and go through the frequently asked questions. The webinar we are hosting is an informational session where you can chat with me, previous students, or other TAs about the program if you have any questions. Um, 
yeah, the dates for this are going to be announced on our Instagram and our other social medias, so you can go check that out and sign up for the webinar if you want to have more information. Attending the webinar is not required for acceptance into the program. Okay, then, like I said, the frequently asked questions and their answers are in the application document and on the website. I'm going to go through them here just to talk them through and provide um, additional information. If you like have read those and they're good for you, you can stop watching the video at this point. Okay, so to reiterate what the application process is, um, it's going to be a written application and an interview. So you need to download the application, complete it, submit it by January 1st. Then you'll be notified um, if you get an interview by February 1st, you'll conduct the interview sometime in February. You'll be notified by March 17th if you've been accepted into the program. Then dates on, um, you know, when you need to submit the registration forms, when you need to confirm whether you want to participate in the program are going to be given after. Um, if you are accepted into the program, you don't have to participate. It's not binding but we do ask that students do not officially enroll unless they want to, because we, you shouldn't commit to a slot with a TA, which is very limited, unless you are actually for sure that you're going to do the program. In the event that we have a limitation of TAs, we will do a wait list. More information on that will be told later. And any student who is on the wait list um, will come from the, the interview pool. So if you, if your application, your written application, did not progress to the interview stage, then you cannot be put on the wait list. But um, yeah, our decisions after and based on the interviews can be eligible for wait list. Okay, then the program is from January or from July third to August fourth. Yeah, um, and then is there a cap on how many students will be accepted? Um, Currently, Zoom capacities don't allow us to hold more than 3,000 students. However, we are not accepting as many students as we can. We're accepting as many students as Zoom allows us that we feel are eligible for the program. Um, thus, we will accept anywhere from zero to 3,000 students. So you're, we will probably not get 3,000 applications. So you are not in competition with other people. You just need to focus on, you know, if you convinced that you are really interested in the program, you put your best foot forward and you really want to be in this program, then you have a very good chance at, at getting in. Um, what if English isn't my native language? Okay, so if English isn't your native language, that's fine, but you need to be aware that we are not translating any of our materials. The lectures, the recitations, the discussions, everything will need to be done in English. We are giving students the opportunity if they want to be in a recitation that has students who speak a similar language. So for example, if your native language is Arabic, you can opt into a recitation, um, if we have enough students, you can opt into a recitation where everyone in that recitation speaks Arabic. The recitations will still be in English, but if you want to ask questions to your fellow students in the chat, or if you want to ask for a translation, there will be people there to help you and, and work through things with you. So yes, um, but like I said, everything is going to be done in English and you need to come prepared for that. Um, yeah, and you just, you know, need to be able to make use of the materials and communicate with your TAs, but your English definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Um, who should I ask to write my letter of recommendation? You should ask someone who has um, educated you in some capacity, who is not a friend or family member. Um, yeah, so, you know, can't ask friends, can't ask family members, can't ask people who, um, you know, you've been in a club with or things like that. They need to be someone who has had an educational role in your life. Um, how has the program changed from previous years? So the curriculum is completely different and expanded like I described earlier. We are adding the mandatory homework um, collaboration sessions and we're also adding more projects. Um, we're also going to clean a lot of things up a bit, so there's going to be a lot more infrastructure, so we won't have as many logistical issues as we did in the past. Um, we're also being a lot more strict on our student pool, so you can definitely expect that your peers are going to be excited, competent, interested, and really will make use of this program. So you'll be surrounded by people who can really inspire you 
and yeah, who are really here for, for the right reasons. So those are the main differences between last time. Um, if you participated last year, can you participate again? Yes, you can. And like I said earlier, you can do either Neuroscience 1 or Neuroscience 2, but we recommend you do Neuroscience 1 um, and Neuroscience 2 next year if you wish. And then you might be wondering if you're able to duly enroll to do Neuroscience 1 and Neuroscience 2 at the same time. Um, you can do that, however, the time commitment for each program is not going to change. Neuroscience 1 is still 20 hours, Neuroscience 2 is still 20 hours. So if you are willing and interested to spend, you know, 40 hours on this program a week, then yeah, you can duly enroll. But um, your deadlines, your requirements for one program will not be lifted just because you're in both programs. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, I'm participating in another in a number of other summer activities should I apply. Um, again, you really need to be able to spend like 20 to 25 hours a week on this program. You know, if you have five to 10 other things going on, we really recommend that you don't apply to this program. Um, it just wastes your own time, it wastes the TA's time, it stresses you out, so it's not good for anyone. Um, so really, you know, if you're doing this program, you need to hone in on this and one or two other things probably and um, not participate in five to ten things in addition to this. What are the prerequisites for this program? Um, like I said earlier, you just need to have a, basically a foundational high school knowledge. So you need to be able to be familiar with basic high school chemistry, basic high school biology, basic high school mathematics. Um, yeah, and if you're kind of interested in those, you can look at some syllabi online for like IB or AP biology and chemistry and algebra 2, which is not an AP or IB course, and those should be pretty standard. Okay, and then the difference between neuroscience 1 and 2. Again, neuroscience 2 requires a bit more background in neuroscience, probably for like freshmen or sophomores in undergrad or for seniors in high school who have some background in neuroscience, and neuroscience 1 is for anyone, for beginners. So yeah, that's like everything about this program. Um, if you have any questions, then you can send an email to the email that is linked on the website under this application, and that email will also be on the flyers that are on our social media, including Instagram. So yeah, um, feel free to reach out with any questions you have, and hope you'll consider applying. Thank you.